Bonjour, peeps. Hi, this is Neshi Lokatz. Welcome to Star Nation's organization's main fan page here at um, Facebook. Star Nation's radio network, magazine, and publishing fan page. Um, it's to, uh, Wednesday. Sorry, it's Wednesday, October 24th um, in the afternoon uh, for the daily live stream. Hey, Cindy Lynn just joined in. Hello there, lady. Um, it's another gorgeous day here in Wisconsin, northwestern Wisconsin. Um, pretty mild out. It's in the mid 50s. You know, can't complain about that. And uh, toward the end of October, yes, we've had a little snow flurries. Was that a week ago or two weeks ago? But you know, the last three days has been gorgeous. Oh, she, uh, Lynn, Cindy Lynn's saying that she's listening while at the doctor's office for my boys physicals and shots. Oh, okay. Well, so glad you're with us. Glad you're with us. And Margaret just joined. Hello, Margaret. Um, so, you know, <laughs> as I sat down to, to get prepared for the live stream and, you know, you got you to gotta type some stuff in and, you know, do the prep work. I realized, hey, I forgot to send out a promo this morning. It was flat out busy at my house this morning from 530 on. Um, Dredge got up early, although he slept through the night. Yay! <laughs> it's always a good thing. Hello, Margaret. Um, it's always a good thing. It, you know, it's just, it was just busy this morning. Um, one of the things that we did, um, Paul's working second shift, so he had, he had the morning to help me with a few things. And um, George, we took him to puppy school, puppy daycare. Um, so he, hopefully he's running around with other four-leggeds and having a grand old time. Uh, while Paul and I were doing stuff in the house that it's kind of hard to do when George is around. Um, he, he being only three months old, you know. <laughs> so anyway, um, one of the things that we did, I have, I past tense, had a lot of house plants. A lot. Most of them were my mom's. I'd say about half of them were my mom's. Um, and we found, I, we had them out on the four season porch and, um, it's actually a three season because here in Wisconsin in, <laughs> in dead of winter, you don't want to be spending two to $500, 200 to $500 a month to heat the four season porch. <laughs> really you don't. So, um, I usually bring all the plants in, right? <clears throat> well, we have so many plants and not enough window space. Um, and I tried grow lights and it just didn't work very well. And so um, I made the decision that uh, we were going to um, make the plant population in my house a little bit more manageable. <laughs> and it took me a long time, but we did find um, some place where we could donate the plants. And uh, who knew the, the, the Veterans Administration Hospital here in Toma was uh, their volunteer center said, yes, we'll take them because they, there's, there's different wings of both the, the long-term care and um, um, the geriatric area. But, you know, there's just a lot of places where they could use the plants. So Paul helped me. I think we moved like 14 house plants, everything from the little one to really big ones. <laughs> And so we used his truck and and did that and did and took and took most of the plant stands so that they have them those with the plants and so it was it was a tough a long big job it really was um, and so I'm glad that Paul was there to help me with that and uh, to get them loaded up and to get them offloaded and and all of that so um, it was I have to say it was a little emotional for me because. Um, you know, I, I believe that everything has a consciousness and uh, many of those house plants had been with my mom for a really long time. Some of them were mine and had been with me for, for some time as well. And so it was just, um, you know, talking to them this morning and letting them know what was going to be happening. And they knew about it for a few weeks already, um, but that today was the day and and so it's kind of a sad morning for me. And I had a lot to do. I had a lot to do. I couldn't um, just slow down and have an ugly cry <laughs> in that moment. So, so we were we were very busy this morning. So that's why I didn't I didn't put out a um, promotion this morning. So with that said, for those that are in the live chat, if you would help me, 
I really would appreciate it to share it out. Um, even if you do it to your, your own timeline, or if you know, like a friend that would be interested in the, um, the broadcast, um, I really would appreciate it. Um, because I really didn't get a chance to, to do it properly this morning. So I'm going to like it and I'm sharing it to my timeline. And, um, and also I'll share it out to the closed group too. Um, and so we have just a moment here. It doesn't take me long to do this. I'm just going to let them know that I'm live streaming right now. Please join me. There we go. That's to my personal timeline. And I'm going to share it out to the group, actually two groups. Um, we're going to uh, share it with the Star Nations Radio Network closed group. And also to the Academy closed group. Okay, and then please join me. Oops, got to spell right. Those quick keys work, but you have to actually spell correctly for them to find it. <laughs> there we go. So that closed group and the academy. There you go. It's done. Yeah, I like using my phone for it. It's quick. It's easy. And I appreciate your help. Hey, Rochelle's with us. Hello, Rochelle. Having a difficult time with my cat, Neshi. She continues to terrorize Betsy Bug. May give her away. Betsy Bug is being neurotic and anxiety has taken her over. Uh, well, you got to do what you got to do to have peace in your house, right? Yeah. Yeah. There must be a reason why they're not they're not getting along, you know. Um, it sounds like they're both female cats. You know, and I don't know a whole lot about cats, I have to tell you that. Uh, we've always had dogs, so I could tell you a lot about dogs. <laughs> Or dogs that, that have problems with cats. Um, but cat and cat, I'm not sure. Maybe there's some someone else in the in the chat that will have um, some insight or, you know, um, or at least supporting you in making your decision. Um, it's not an easy one, you know, but understandable. Understandable. Thank you for sharing, Rochelle. And Jackie's here and Elise is here. The whole gang's here. I love it. Thank you for being here with me. I appreciate it. Um, today's card draw, um, we got three cards, and so there's a lot of information, so we should probably get started. And I'm really drinking coffee this afternoon. Why? Because I need the caffeine. Did you guys catch the show last night, commun uh, Communications from Home, with my guest, um, Bob Huntingtinga? Did you catch that? I tell you what, that was such an eye opener for me in a few places. Um, even before we we started the live show, um, some of the information that Bob had already shared with me, and also I started reading and almost done with the book, um, uh, Dirty Jeans, right? And they're kind of an eye opener. It's like, oh my goodness, okay, we can change some of this stuff. Um, don't have to have rheumatoid arthritis. Don't have to experience um, all the symptoms of aging. <laughs> Don't have to do that. Um, it could be it can be a lot more graceful, right? It can be a lot more graceful. And um, I was just reading something about um, the gene and the gallbladder, and I thought, man, you know, I wish I would have known some of this stuff. Like, you know, I think I had my gallbladder out maybe ten years ago, something like that. I could still maybe have my gallbladder. At any rate, I learned a lot so far, and so I'm really, really grateful and appreciate Bob coming on with me yesterday evening and uh, sharing that really important information with us about our genes, our DNA, and how um, how we can actually clean them up, clean them up so that, uh, and that's through uh, lifestyle, lifestyle change, um, and so that we can have a much more... Um, enjoyable life really really so anyway here is the first card for the card draw for today i kind of like this one it's pretty 
Um, heart guardian. Love and let yourself be loved. Love and let yourself be loved. Such a pretty card. You know, and, and the red. We always associate red with, uh, with the heart, right? Um, and she's wearing the sacred heart. I'm going to show that again for those who, who know about the sacred heart. There's many meanings to that. That term, sacred heart, depending on, on your culture and um, religion. Uh, page 104. Okay, so here's what Kyle has to say about the, the um, heart guardian. It's about love and let yourself be loved. The message, welcome with open arms opportunities to give and receive love. Welcome with open arms opportunities to give and receive love. Yeah, you know, I, I think that most of us would want to believe that we are individually open for love, right? That if you ask yourself that question, am I truly open for receiving and giving love? Intellectually, I think we would say, yes, I am. But emotionally, sometimes what we do is we, we do this. <laughs> you know, it's arm's length, arm's length, or further. Come here, come here, go away, go away. Um, you know, and, and that has a lot to do with um, some of our belief systems, has to do with experience. Um, there's a part of us that doesn't trust, um, doesn't trust another two-legged. So when they say, welcome with open arms, opportunities to give and receive love, I think that it, the, the key word in there for me is opportunities. That one presents itself is is to remind ourselves to be open to receiving love, open to having the opportunity to express love to someone. Um, yeah, and not spend so much of our time in our head about it. That expecting an opportunity to be able to do that. Jackie's saying it was super interesting talking about the show last night, wasn't it though? Holy smokes. There was a lot of aha moments going on. Rochelle says, I have three females and a male. She, she, yes, she poops on the refrigerator because she's afraid of this. Ah, hmm. Well, Rochelle, you, you do have a hard decision to make, a challenging one. But if you come from your heart, it's going to be all right. It'll be good. Um, I'm sure that if you make the decision to find Kat Nushi a good home, that's what's going to happen. You'll find the perfect home for her. Hi, Amy Daniels. <laughs> and Rochelle says, wow, this is, this, this is great words. Yes, it is. It really is. Um, welcome with open arms opportunities to give and receive love. Uh, Kyle goes on to say that the heart guardian is an angelic energy that can help you call for protection and guidance with all this all issues surrounding your heart. This is essentially the angel who helps you with all relations, whether they're with yourself, family, or even romantic connections. She can enable you to move beyond any limiting fears about trust, discern whom to trust, and understand how you can move forward in a balanced relationship with that person. So he says that in this card, she is adorned with a sacred heart and draped in red, in a red cloak um, to show her capacity to let love lead the way, right? And when we allow love to lead the way, when we're, we have our, open, our heart open to receiving and giving love, um, we're actually allowing our soul to lead, allowing our soul to lead. Isn't that a pretty picture? All the different shades of red. Yeah. 
Um, he goes on to say that you are love. Let me say that again. You are love. You are lovable. And you are loving. The energy of love is surrounding your whole world at this time. Isn't that great? That it's surrounding us right now. The universe, the universe is at the frequency of love. And so the universal energy is flowing through us all the time, all the time. And so that means that we have love flowing through this, through us all the time and surrounding us. You know, it depends on, on our focus and where we place our energy. If we want to focus on the love, then we're in that frequency. Um, but if we fo want to focus on other things, other challenges, you know, um, and so then we're in that frequency rather than the frequency of love. Um he goes on to say, they want you to know that you are a highly loving being who deserves to give and receive love. If you are finding it challenging to feel love at this time, it's important for you to give yourself credit where it's due. You are also encouraged to welcome and uh, welcome support from others. Learn to receive. Don't try to do everything on your own. <laughs> and I have to say that when I read that line this morning, I just... It was one of these. <laughs> it's, you know, when, when it's the same message that you're hearing over and over and over, we got to pay attention to it. And so I have to pay attention to that one. Is that, is that to go ahead and ask for help, that, that um, you're encouraged to welcome support from others, to learn to receive, and that we don't have to do everything on our own. And I have, I smile about that because um, that's me, you know, um, is, is doing things on my own because it's always been that way. Um, but that's a belief system that I can change. And this morning was actually application of that because <laughs> I could, I could have done the plants on my own. I could have loaded up my car and taken them over to the VA for that donation some of them are kind of heavy, um, but I accepted help from Paul when he offered because he had other things to do this morning, um, but he rearranged his morning so that he could be available to help me do that. Um, and, and so asking for help and understanding and agreeing that we don't have to do everything on our own that it's okay to ask for help. And we actually did it pretty well, too. There was a lot of plants to fit into the back end of the truck, and we did it. <clears throat> he says that you're also encouraged to welcome support from others. Oh, we read that. If you're w working on a relationship or in a new relationship, this card could be could and can usher in energies that allow you to forge a powerful connection with your partner. Love is in the air, he says. Hmm. Yeah, the frequency of love. That's where we're at this afternoon for the cards, for the energy of the day. Love and let yourself be loved. And I have to say, wearing a red shirt, I didn't do that on purpose. Um, we, we were doing a lot of that, the plant stuff, and it was like I was, you know, my shirt was dirty, my jeans were dirty, and I said, okay, I got to run upstairs and put on a different shirt. And this is the first one I grabbed. Yeah. So consciously, I didn't wear the red shirt because of the heart guardian. But look how that worked out. Synchronicities, don't you just love them? Dan Jacobs, good afternoon to you too. I'm so glad to see you in the chat. Good to have you here. Um, and so the second card that came is this one. Fire Guardian, ignite your passion. 
And notice that he that he has an orb just above his hand. And inside the orb is a tetrahedron, or also known as a triangle, which is the platonic solid that has the energy of fire. Isn't that nice? And if you take a look at, I don't know if we can get that to focus in, on his skin is um, swirls, and I don't think that they're actual, they look, it looks like smoke, actually, to me. Yeah. What a great picture. So he is the fire guardian. And what do we know about fire without actually looking anything up yet? Fire is purification. It is one of the one of the ways to purify. It's a very active energy, extremely active energy. Um, when you want to get energy moving, put a little red in it. You know, wear the red T-shirt. <laughs> um, yeah, light a fire, that kind of thing, to get the energy moving. There, there's um, Fire can be destructive as well um, if it's out of balance. So I am my astrolog my astrological sign is uh, Sagittarius and it's a fire, and I and I actually am a quadruple Sagittarius. Yeah, so that's a lot of fire. <laughs> I've had to learn how to wield the fire. I've had to master that because it is a gift and it is a positive gift, um, but when it's out of balance is when. Um, yeah, don't want to be caught in the path <laughs> of that raging inferno. Don't want to do that. That was my 20s. You guys don't know me like that. I don't, I've changed so much since then. Grown up, I have. I've grown up. I own my fire now. Took me a while. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's get off, get up, caught up with the comments. No, you look great in red. Thank you. I appreciate that. Amy, that is that is so hard to do. Ask for and accept help. Yeah. And really it has a lot to do with love. Right? Because when we when we're open to giving, we're all, all usually open to sending love. Um, when we're open to um, receiving Generally speaking, we're also open to receiving love. And so when we <laughs> when we are cautious in making the request for help or accepting the help, um, many times that has to do with trust. Trust. You know, and, and sometimes... Sometimes it's also due because um, you could be emotionally upset, right? So I can remember when my dad was um, in the veterans hospital and he was there for, I don't know, maybe three months or so. Yeah. And I would have f friends, especially friends, saying things to me like, you know, if you ever need help, just let me know. Or they'd come up and say, you know, what can I do for you? And I would just be so grateful that somebody even asked me that. <laughs> but my mind was a blank. It's like there was so much that had to get done. Um, that it was like, oh, I don't, I know that there's something, but I can't think of anything right now. Um, and so... I guess what I'm saying is that we can be a little prepared as well when there is something that that um, you could use help with is to maybe even write it down or put it in your phone under notes or something 
because in those moments, really, we our mind does go blank, and um, and it still happens today. Oh my gosh, um, Paul will say, "Oh, it looks like we need to go to the grocery store. What do you need?" And I'll stand there and I said, "Well, I know we need something. I just don't know what it is." <laughs> and it doesn't matter because when you go and when you go and when when you come back. And I said, then I'll remember that we needed such and such, you know, and so we would have to go back to the store anyway. Um, it's, it's kind of a running joke in our house. Um, but even with that, sometimes, you know, um, when you're extremely busy and, and uh, you're in service to other people, is that sometimes when somebody asks you that, it's like, um, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, you know, thank you for asking, but I'm not sure. Yeah, and so we have to, sometimes we have to be a little bit prepared to, um, especially, you know, for those I, I've seen in the, the chat, those that are um, primary caregivers, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? That when somebody says, you know, I could come over and, and spend a, an afternoon or something like that, is to take down the person's name and telephone number. <laughs> And actually call them and say, you know, I'd like to go and, I don't know, get my hair cut. Or um, I want to go and run in and, and do some of my own personal shopping. Like, I need new jeans. <laughs> and how am I supposed to get to the store to do that, right? Is to actually call them and ask them. And, I, and I'm saying that, you know, I'm going to have to walk my talk here, really, is to do the same thing. So, <gasps> My cousin Susan's in the chat. Welcome, Susan. I'm so glad you're here. It's good to see you in the chat. Thanks for, for coming. And Jennifer Wilson joined us too. Hi, Jennifer. Gosh, it's good to be with you guys this afternoon. Yeah. So anyway, here we've got three cards. This is the second card that, that came today. It's the Fire Guardian. It's about igniting your passions. So we're just talking about this one. Um, and the author of the cards that we're using, for those that don't know, is um, just a brand new deck, Angels and Ancestors Oracle Cards by Kyle Gray. We just started using these, I think we're in our third week, maybe, something like that. Um, I like them. I like them a lot, and I like the, the artwork, too. All right, so this is what Kyle says about the fire guardian. He says that the fire guardian represents the angels of fire. Fire is an energy that many people are afraid of, but shouldn't be. Burning desires can lead to great expansion. Allow the fire guardian to help you awaken a wilder side of yourself and burn away any fear or shame that stands between you and your desires. When this card appears, you are reminded that passion is powerful and absolutely encouraged by spirit. And there's many different kinds of ways of defining passion, right? Um, there's a passion for your significant other, if you have one, if you don't have one, and, and there's passion in your life with maybe, you know, the, those friends that you go out with. Um, but there's also passion that we have for our careers. There's passion that we have for um, hobbies, right? There's passion that we have for projects that sometimes we volunteer for. Um, you know, and in fact, when we were at the uh, VA hospital um, donating the plants this morning, um, the volunteers, that's where we dropped off the plants. There were um, four volunteers there this morning. And um, we were talking for them for a little bit. And, you know, and you could tell, you could really tell in their eyes um, and also in their energy field that they enjoy what they do to be in service to others, right, in that way. It was good to see. Good to sense. Um, but we have passions for a lot of things. And so um, when, when we're out of balance, when you're out of balance, and let's say you're working a lot, um, you do have passion for your, for your work, for your career, but sometimes it can be out of balance where it becomes, it assumes your, almost your entire life. And so 
when we're searching for balance, for balance, um, when we're allowing our heart to lead, um, we have the opportunities to bring that into balance. Because love has a little bit to do with it. <laughs> but this, so that's, that's the second card that came. Fire Guardian. What else does Kyle have to say about that? He says, um, <laughs> you are being guided by your angels to connect with a powerful energy of desire at this time. If you have recently set an intention to explore your sexual side or become more sexually open, the fire of desire can burn away any old setbacks that are preventing you from expressing that part of your nature. If you're in a relationship, this card can ind indicate a great spiritual and sexual connection. So really, you know, when you put those two cards together, these two cards, I put, oops, I put the book down. There we go. When you put these two cards together, because this is the first one that came, Heart Guardian, love and let yourself be loved. And then you add this one, the Fire Guardian is about the passion, right? Ignite your passions. Is that when we're talking about the balance of giving and receiving, we're talking about balance of what you love to do the people that you love, that when we're in balance, that we make we make time for all of that, right? Um, we make time to be loving to someone else, and we make time um, to receive the love when we're in balance. Um, we make time for our career, for our work, but we also make time for the people in our life that we love. And it's not always about um, you know, the sexual love, it's also about the love of, of a good friendship. It's a love about um, those people in your life, your inner circle. You know, I think we all have that, or we should really, because that's a healthy thing to do, is, um, is to have that. And so it's, to me, the, the, with these two cards, we're talking about balance. Balancing of the things that we love and that we're also giving and receiving love. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? You know, that we that it's important. It's important to take that time to be with the people that you care about, the people that you love. It's important to have um, and to to enjoy your career, your job, and to um, to have passion about it. Um, but with that passion is to be able to have the time that you want to spend with the people in your life too. Yeah. You know, when we talk about um, responsibility and we talk about um, the work ethic, <laughs> you know, here, here in Wisconsin, you know, and I'm sure it's probably good and the same in most of the upper Midwestern states is that, um, you know, that work ethic, it has just been, you know, you've been taught that since a very, very young age and that um, you don't have idle moments, um, that there, you, you're uh, most, when you're productive is when you're successful. And, um, and so you're constantly going, 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 going. Um, when you do that, you don't have a lot of time in your life for the people that you care about, that you love. And so it, finding, striking that balance for yourself is really important. And only you can do that. No one can tell you what your balance is. But how do you know when it's in balance? You're happy. You're happy. <laughs> and um, you're healthy, right? Happy and healthy. That your life has joy to it. When you have a passionate about something to do that's in your life, whether it's a career or a hobby, um, for those that are retired, um, you know, is to have that balance in your life. And I think that 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 the message between these two cards that's a good one. Now, 
the third card is very interesting. Very interesting. I'm going to show this one to you. I like the artwork on this one too. It's called Hunter. Track down your fears and desires. Very Celtic. Very Celtic in nature. And when the first time I saw that, it's exactly what I thought. You no, know, this is very Celtic. Between the blue um, in the, the artwork on the body and um, the horns and the bow, very Celtic. And then I read the, the information about uh, the hunter. And, uh, and it is Celtic. Just got to get to the right page. Here we go. The hunter is track down your fears and desires. The message is track down all of your fearful thoughts and feelings. When you find them, you will find your desires too. And I had to go, oh my gosh, that, that is an, uh, a little bit of an aha, don't you think? Is when you, when you track down your fearful thoughts and feelings, you will find your desires too. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> Most of us don't want to track down those, those fearful thoughts. Most of us want to act like they're not there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Susan's saying hi. And Elise is, how is Aaron's campaign going? I don't really know. I don't know. Um, I haven't talked to her in quite a long time. Um, what I do see is the, 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 some of the things on Facebook, but no, I haven't, I haven't, haven't seen it, haven't talked to her. So I'm, I'm assuming she's busy with it, with her campaign. My niece is running for state senator. Yeah, and so um, I, I haven't heard, and and she's not in my district, so. Um, so I don't see anything about that. I would really have to go out there and specifically look for it. Yeah, so I can't really answer that. Um, <laughs> Rochelle says, I haven't really enjoyed, I have really enjoyed this time together. Well, me too. Me too, Rochelle. Um, this, this particular card, just that first two sentences. Track down all of your fearful thoughts and feelings. When you find them, you will find your desires too. How do you guys feel about that? My, my mind kind of went <laughs> with it. Because um, because we all have some level of fear of th something. You know, um, I don't know of anybody who doesn't. I mean, I know people who have fear of spiders. I know who I know people who have um, a fear of public speaking. Um, I know people that um, they're very anxious about being alone. Um, they have a fear of being alone. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know the opposite too. I know people who um, who have a fear of being in, in groups of people. You know, they can handle maybe one or two, but if you have more than just three or four people and you have, especially if you have 10, 15, 20, or 100, you're not gonna find them in, in, in that place. You're not. Um, and so I think that we all have something, something. And so what Kyle is saying is that if we track those down, track them down, identify them that will also find our desires because it's the flip side of it it's the flip side Susan is saying this is very interesting what kind of cards are the these um these are oracle cards here's the box top They're, it's called angels and ancestors oracle cards um the author is kyle gray and the artist is Lily Moses, I believe. Yeah, Lily Moses. Um, it's a brand new deck, literally brand new. It's just published in 2018 and uh, released in September. Um, from what I understand, Kyle has like um, four or five books out. And he has, um, I think, three 
and this is the fourth deck of cards that he's created. Um, yeah. And so every morning, and I've been doing this for years, every morning what I do is I'm, I, I call to my spiritual team, those in spirit who assist me, right? And um, I ask if they could please show me the energy that's important for us to know about today for the highest good um, and that we can share with others, you know? And, uh, and so I start to shuffle the cards and I'm shuffling. And usually what happens is a card will kind of jump out of the deck. Um, and then for, and for this instance this morning, it was kind of funny. Um, I'm shuffling and the first one, the heart guardian jumped out and following right behind her was the fire guardian. And um, I, I asked my team, I said, is this um, the two cards we need? And it was, it was like shuffle again. And so I, I did another shuffle and that's when the hunter came up. So um, the information that Kyle brings with each card, we take a look at it. Um, we do our intuition with it, right? And piecing it together to see what, what is the message here? What is the message? Spirit is bringing to us. Rochelle says, I fear of getting older and not being able to take care of myself. Oh, I know. I know that one. Yep. Because, you know, my mom, um, she talks about that every once in a while. Um, you know, not expecting to live to 99. Um, and here she is. And, and she says, um, you know, I just don't understand why I'm still here, <laughs> you know, and, and she, she, her fear is nursing homes. So here, here we are dealing with that. Um, but I understand what you're saying, Rochelle, um, is that Paul and I've talked about that too, because, you know, we don't have kids. And so even, even if we had kids, doesn't mean that they're going to, they're going to want to, or be able to care for us. And so what, how do we plan for this? Do we plan for this? You know, so I understand. Um, and that takes a lot of bravery, courage, just to even write it out like that, Rochelle. So thank you for sharing that with us, because I'm sure that there's others that have that same feeling, that same fear. Hey, Stephanie's here. Uh, she says, going to have to catch the replay to catch the first half of today's broadcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no problem. You know, right time, right place, right? Right time, right place. So here is the third card that came, which is Hunter. Track down your fears and desires. And what Kyle was saying in that first part of the message is that um, if we track down our fearful thoughts, right, our fears, that will also find our desires because it's the flip side of it. They're connected. You know, so if we take just for instance, you know, that fear of public speaking, because that's actually a pretty common, common fear, is that um, we do desire to have some attention, kind of had that spotlight, right? Um, that you might want to be noticed, you might want to be heard. So that's a desire. That's a desire. So if you're looking for, um, it'd be easy, right? Look for, look for your fears and then um, identify what the desire is that goes along with it. It's an interesting way to look at it. Kyle goes on to say that the hunter card is based on his favorite Celtic god, Serenos. And I was hoping, I was hoping um, Mervyn Kelly was going to be in, in the chat today. Um, it would have been nice to hear from his point of view about Cyrenos. Um, uh, Cyrenos is the stag god of the wild and represents both the hunted and the hunter. Similarly, the hunter helps, us, helps you connect with the energy that is both fearful and fearless. Fearful and fearless. Your fears are the only things that are standing between you and what you desire at this time. So you have to come face to face with them. 
as the hunter does with wild animals and go beyond them. So if you can, sometimes even just labeling or naming your fear and then stating it as Rochelle did, um, sometimes we're, it puts us in a position um, that we're no longer in denial or, um, or you know, that we're, we're, we're ready now. We're ready to actually look at it and do what we need to do to take care of it, whether it's healing something or rather just facing it. Do you remember in the cards that we used, um, I think it was the Sacred Path cards, if I remember right. And we we're talking about that um, counting coup that in the old days before um, European um, contact here in here on Turtle Island with Native people is that um, counting coup was an act of bravery. And a counting coup meant that you were running or riding your horse or coming so close to your enemy that you could touch them. Even more, you could either take their horse or their wife. <laughs> That's what, the, what it was said. Um, but there was a, an extreme act of bravery was to count coup. And I was saying that in modern day, today, uh, we can still count coup, but what we're doing is we're counting coup on our fears, on our self, um, facing our shadow self, facing our fears, coming close enough to touch them so that we know who they are, what it is we're fearful of. And once we do that, because it's an act of bravery, um, we have the empowerment too to face them and to, to take care of it is, is to no longer be fearful, but to be fearless, right? Yeah, counting coup. How is mom doing? Uh, Su Susan's ask, asking how my mom is doing. Um, she's doing pretty well for 99, you know. Um, this time of year is really kind of hard on her physically um, because of her arthritis. It's this change of season from fall to winter that she has the most physical pain. And so um, many times that's what we're dealing with, especially in the mornings. Um, and so the mornings can be um, a challenge for her. And so that means that, you know, I'm there to be able to help her as much as I can anyway. Um, but given that, um, she's doing pretty well. She's doing pretty well. Um, you know, she says to me the other day, she goes, I noticed that I, I've slowed down quite a bit this year, which is true because she's taking a lot more cat naps than she used to. Um, but you know what? She's still balancing her own checkbook. She's still um, keeping track of politics and baseball. How, how, how more American can that be, right? <laughs> politics and baseball. Um, and so she's doing pretty well. So thanks for asking, Susan. I'll let her know that that um, that we spoke kind of today, okay? She'll be interested in that. And Stephanie says, um, this is a gorgeous image. Ser serious shadow work time for so many. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely it is. And it, isn't it interesting that Serenos, Serenos would come up when we're so close to Samhain and Halloween? Yeah. I was thinking that. How do you spell Serenos? Here. Um, let's see if I can get that in the chat. If I can type and type and talk at the same time. <laughs> Just give me a second. We'll spell it. C E R N N U N N O S. And he is the Celtic god. Hunt. Spell it would be even better. It doesn't help that I have bifocals too. I think that's right. There we go. Serenos, um, <clears throat> the god of the hunt. So Kyle says that instead of being hunted down by your fears or other feelings that you have buried, become the hunter. 
You're being given confidence and strength at this time. So use your power to make a difference. Um, you are not here to cower away or live in the shadows. You are here to realize your fullest potential. Isn't that cool? We're here to realize our fullest potential. But this can only occur when you step up and do what needs to be done. When this card arises, there could be an opportunity to face an aspect of your past or bring closure to a situation that has been haunting you. So become the hunter. So, you know, how does this all get weaved together for the energy for today, right? So let's take a look. Because first we had Heart Guardian. Love and allow yourself to be loved. It's a balance of giving and receiving. And knowing that you don't have to do something all by yourself, all on your own, that you are loved and you can ask for help. Right? There's that one. And then the second one was Fire Guardian. Ignite your passions. And we're saying that it's that these two are actually about being leading with your heart, allowing your soul to lead, and having that balance between your passion and the people that you're passionate about, the people that you love, or perhaps the things that you love, like a puppy, <laughs> like George. And then the third one is this one, is Hunter. Track down your fears and, and, and your desires. Okay. And when you put all three of them together, what is, what's the, the energy for today? I think it's about leading with your heart. And accepting that, you're, that you are lovable. And that you have the uh, ability to remove any obstacles in reaching your desires. Because if we do it, if we do it with the energy of love, if we come from our hearts, um, we're actually going in fearless. To me, um, especially when we talk about doing sacred space, right? Space clearing. Um, and when I was a teacher of that, <laughs> is that, you know, I was teaching students that, um, that in order to um, be a good space clearer is that you have to set your ego aside and that you go in as clean as possible, um, leaving your own stuff on the outside. This isn't about you. Um, but you go in fearless, meaning that you go in with a lot of love that you are love, right? So I think that's what this is about today. Being fearless, having a lot of love, being passionate about your desires and having that balance of giving and receiving so that we can spend time not just on, on the thing, on our career that we love, or a job we love, or a volunteer work that we love, um, but also to spend time with the people that we love, both the two-legged and the four-legged. Hmm. So Rochelle says she's got to go. Thanks, Rochelle, for coming and, and spending time with us. And Susan is saying, oh, bless her heart. That's good. She'll, she'll good. She keeps busy. Yeah, and she's still doing embroidery work, and she's still doing um, bead work, working with, with deer skin and that kind of thing. So, yeah, she keeps busy, that's for sure. Um, yeah, and, she, and Sue is saying, please do, even, even if we've never met in person, we're still family. That's right, we still are. We still are. Yeah, there we go. And Stephanie is saying, cool, thank you for the spelling it out. You're absolutely welcome. Um, and so that's what I think is going on for the, the energy for today. You know, um, see how it unfolds for you. See where you can sense, feel, or see how the energy from this the, the cards from spirit 
um, how it unfolds for you today. Um, notice if you're a direct participant in it, or if you are, um, or if you are <laughs> client, um, if you are a witness to it, because either way you're learning something from it, right? Um, and also if it vibrates with you, if it's a, um, if it feels right to you, right? Um, that if it's um, something that resonates with you, that vibrates, resonates with you, that is to embrace it. Pick it up and embrace it and see what it what it uncovers for you in your life. If it didn't resonate with you, that's okay. Don't worry about it. No worries. Um, it's not meant for you. You can just let it lie. And what I usually say is that maybe you're the messenger. You know, if you know somebody who could benefit from the information or find it enjoyable, share the link with them and be the messenger. Yeah. yeah. So let's see, this evening, uh, Polly Viola Bay, um, her show, Soul Connections, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, it's all about healing. And for those energy workers and light workers who um, – have themselves at the bottom of the list and haven't done their own healing work, which happens quite often. Um, this evening is really meant for people like you. Um, Polly Jo, what she does is she creates a sacred space along with her spiritual team. And her she and her team help us um, with our own intentions for our own healing. We work with our own spiritual teams and uh, to be able to do that kind of healing. And let me tell you, it can get pretty powerful healings out of this evening. Um, and once the meditation is done, um, then Polly Jo, what she does is she does individual card draws. So if you are interested in something like that to get what's called, I consider it kind of, kind of like a mini reading. Um, she does that right after the meditation. So um you can join Polly Joe this evening on her the fan page for her show is on ch chakra sessions and you can watch for the notifications for that okay um, yeah with that enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and we'll see you back here tomorrow afternoon for the card draw information and live stream um, and until then Bama Mina that's Padawata me for until we see each other again okay love you guys. <laughs>